Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me tonight. I'm going to be discussing ES6 and 15 useful features I found when I was learning about it. So to start us off, I'll be discussing block scoping and constant let. So before we had constant let from ES6, we were using ver for everything. Um, this can be a little unclear for, especially for developers coming in from coming into our code base from other languages. So const is much clearer. It literally cannot be reassigned. Um, so because of that, error messages are much more specific. Const and let are also block scoped. So you don't run in the into the error of accidentally reassigning variables. Um, so a code block would be a for loop, for example. Um, yeah, and I guess it also avoids the hack of using immediately invoked function expressions. So that kind of creates block sp scope, but is a little confusing to people that aren't familiar with them. Um, next, I'll talk about template literals which are strings that allow embedded expressions. So you can see in the tag function, the return statement is um, returning a string, basically, that's put together um, with variables that are enclosed in brackets and dollar signs, um, rather than being concatenated um, with pluses and spaces. So it's, it's a bit easier to write that way. Um, we can also do something really cool, which is um, multi-line strings. So rather than adding a backslash and an end to the end of a string, um, you can literally just put them on two separate lines, which is a lot easier. Um, and then tag here just allows you, it's called a tag template literal, and it just allows you to um, take in variables and strings and manipulate them. So in the tag function, string is just an array of the strings that are passed in, and you can split them up. Um, and here we're doing string at zero and string at one. Uh, destructuring and default parameters also make things a lot more clear. So here we're just passing in certain pieces of an object um, that we want to use in our function, and it's a lot easier. Um, we can also pass in default parameters. So um, we don't have an available parameter on our object, but we can say if there is no um, available parameter, we'll just set it equal to true. So that's another good benefit. Um, native modules are also really useful in ES6. So before ES6, uh, modules were implemented via libraries and not built in. So it gives us a way to more easily organize our code. And it's pretty simple to do. So you can see in one line, I'm importing two modules, uh, my module with the alias module and foo, just from um, one line of code. So it just keeps things more organized and clear. Spread and rest are also really useful. So the spread operator, which is just three dots, is used for array construction and destructuring. Um, so you can see an example of that in the upper left. And then um, in the combine words function, you can see we're using one as um, the parameter for the first argument. And then rest, which is just a placeholder word, is basically an array taking in the remainder of the parameters. Um, and since using that um, like spread operator is creating an array and not just an array like instance or an array like object, which is um, when we were using arguments before, we can't really, we kind of have to manipulate the arguments array um, in order to use it. But with the rest array in this case, you can use all sorts of methods on it and do whatever you want. Um, classes are also a lot clearer with ES6. Um, so you can see we're just making the child class here extend person. And if you make a new child object, they can access all of the methods that the person class has as well. Um, but before ES6, we were having to do things like set the child prototype equal to the 
person prototype with object create and set the constructor equal to child, which I still don't fully understand. Um, but yeah, just a lot clearer and briefer, more brief. Um, arrow functions also clean up the code, especially um, when we're using callback functions. Um, and also, uh, arrow functions have implicit returns. So if we just remove the brackets in the return statement and just put it in parentheses, then that's an implicit return. Also, the context of this in arrow functions is defined by the function definition rather than where it's executed. So that can avoid a lot of problems. Um, lastly, I'll talk about map sets and the for of iterator. So before maps and sets in ES6, we didn't really have anything besides objects and arrays um, for our data structures. So maps and sets are really great because they have a lot of built-in things that we can use. So the only real difference is uh, maps take, have a value and a key, and sets just have values which all need to be unique. Um, but you can see we can set a key and a value, get a value at a key, get the size of the map really quickly, delete a value, and even clear the entire data structure. Um, and then also you can see how simple it is to iterate through the map. Um, you can just do like for let key of person dot entry. So that will log out both the key and the value. Um, and then you can also use dot keys or dot values um, if you want. And those, they probably have, they share a lot of the same methods. I think most of them actually. Um, yeah, so that's about it. Thank you for listening. <laughs>